here with S.J.D. Peterson, author of Pony, Jamie Sams, author of the upcoming Foster Family, and B.G. Thomas, author of the newly released Hound Dog and Bee. Uh, we all hope that everybody's going to enjoy our chat. We're going to be here for about the next half hour. Uh, if you have questions that you want to ask the three authors that you didn't send already, you can send them at any time during the chat to Ariel at dreamspinnerpress.com. Okay. And so we're going to start. I'm going to let each of the authors introduce themselves, and then we'll start with questions. So if we want to start with SJD Peterson. Oh, man, you put me on the spot. <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm Joe. We don't go by SJD because that's just a fancy pen name, and no one knows me by that anymore. So it's just Joe. Um, I have no idea. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let them introduce themselves because. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I'd rather. I, I would rather hear about them. So. <laughs> Way to pass the I'm box. Jamie. <laughs> okay, Jamie. I'm Jamie. I don't really have much else to say. I write stories, so yay. Go Ben. <laughs> okay. Well, hey, I'm BG or Ben, and I have a special friend with me today. Here, Sarah Aww. Jane. And she's one of the stars of my new book, Hound Dog and Bean. So I thought she should be here too. Absolutely. Yay. All right, well, let's start with our questions then. Um, so here's our first question. And this is from one of our readers. It says, one of the things I love about MM Romance is that it is open to so many different genres, contemporary, mystery, sci-fi, fantasy, paranormal, etc. What genres besides those you already work in would you like to explore someday? Who wants to answer first? Oh, well, I can do that. It, okay. it, it's kind of funny because I always read fantasy growing up. Like my entire life, I read fantasy until I started writing. And so that's what I started writing was like fantasy and stuff. When I actually started publishing, everything I published was contemporary, and I have no idea how that happened. It just <laughs> did. <laughs> so I would like to actually publish some fantasy someday. That would be cool. Nice. Okay, who's next? Uh, well, I'll answer that. Um, I've written science fiction all my life, or read it, and I've not published anything with science fiction. So I do want to do that, and I also have a Western up my sleeve that I'm really excited about. Wonderful. Joe? Um, actually, I, I'm working on my very first true crime um, that's splintered, and that will be going to Dream Spinner here soon, I hope, if I can never finish it. <laughs> I'm also doing my first mystery and um, expanding on my first paranormal. The only one I can't do is sci-fi. I've never read it. I, I'm not really, never watched it, so that would be a hard one for me. I couldn't do it. So, okay. But anything else is go. I'll, I'll try anything. I did okay. one sci-fi once, but it was a fluke, I think. <laughs> it was good sci-fi, Jamie. <laughs> What's that? I said it was good sci-fi. Yeah, that's why I say it was a fluke. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, all right, next question. It says, the three of you are all regularly published authors and have a devoted reader base. Assuming that you first started writing for pleasure, do you now ever feel an obligation to produce, or is it still as much fun? Oh, it's totally still as much oh. fun. I just get to do more of it now, so it'll be more fun. Well, I and you just got rid of your evil day job, didn't you, Jamie? I just did. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, I'm I'm still having to do the evil day job, <clears throat> so that makes it hard, but I'm loving every minute of it. I have probably two dozen books that I haven't even started writing yet, so I'm, it's going to be a long time before I run out of ideas. I'm, I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. Joe? Yeah, same here. I mean, I'm also blessed that I get to now do this full time, and um, sometimes it, it's challenging. I've been people have threatened to chain me to my desk. One even threatened to go Kathy Bates and misery on me. So you know, you feel like you have to. You definitely have to feel like you have to produce too. But um, I wake up every morning, and I'm just feel blessed that I get to do this. I absolutely love it every day. So it doesn't feel like a job. Fantastic. Okay, well, so the next question is, when will, will your next books be out, and what will they be about? 
And since Jamie got introduced with an upcoming book, I'm going to start with her. Uh, yeah, okay, so that would be the Foster Family Unit coming out February 14th. I, yes, February 14th. I should remember that. That's an easy date to remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, um, what, uh, it's about three guys, so that's different, but I think it's good. Obviously, because I wrote it right. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's your job to think it's good. If, no, yeah. if you don't think it's good, who's going to, right? That's right. All of us. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about it. Um, okay, so the main character is a farmer. He has known his love interest, Griff, for his entire life, almost, since they were about 12. So they've been together for a long time. They've been best friends, and now they're lovers, and they have a friend who they both want to try and help and that kind of complicates everything. So the book is about them trying to reconcile how they feel about this third guy, Howard, and figure out if they can make it work. Sounds good. I want to read What about you? Oh, you who? Ben, what is your next book? Um, my, well, uh, my next one is um, A Secret Valentine, also coming out on February 14th. It's a novella, and uh, it's about two best friends who have had a failure to communicate. Both of them think the other one just wants to be friends. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and mention that I have one coming out in April, which is called Spring Affair, and I'm going to explore the four seasons in the next book. Sounds fun. Joe, what about nice. you? Um, well, my, my next one, I'm not sure of all of the dates of them yet, but I do know the next one from Dream Spinner is going to be um, the fourth book in the Guards of Folsom series, which is Roped, um, which is Jamie and Tech Story. They're the mountain men that Mason runs into in Tag Team, so um, they've become my favorite characters, and so that's the only one out of the Guards of Folsom that's actually going to have its own sequel. So, yeah, I, I fell in love with Rope. So, yeah. Those are characters that catch you by surprise, eh? Oh, I know. They they weren't supposed to be anything. It's just crazy. So yeah. When I when I wrote the boy when I wrote the boy who came in from the cold, um, there's a background character. And as I wrote that book, I began to realize that I was going to have to put the next book on hold because that character is demanding his story. So, Isn't and, that fine? And anything can happen. So I totally get what you guys are saying. Those sometimes make the most fun books to write, I find. The characters you weren't expecting. I agree. Oh, absolutely. That's kind of I'm happened with my tie. He was never supposed to be together. anything together. Whoops. What was that? I said a, a secondary character that ties a whole series together. Yeah. yeah. You've got each one has a, has a different main character, but there's that secondary character that runs all the way through. Yeah. Yeah, those are yeah. and they, they tend I find that they can be so much fun to write because it's almost like there's less pressure. You know, you don't have to always worry about keeping them in character or getting them right. They can just be fun. Mm -hmm. So, yep. I like those guys. When I, started, when I started Spring Affair, it's about four best friends, and I had no idea that each of the four friends was going to have their own book. And then I realized there's four seasons, and I went, oh! <laughs> oh, huh. perfect. Yeah. have a character tell his story. Awesome. Okay. This one is actually from one of the Dream Spinner staff members who wanted to know who you were considered the biggest influence in your life when it comes to writing. Oh, God. Uh, I'm afraid to answer that question, but I, <laughs> I can... Don't be afraid to answer it, Ben. Um, it's Stephen King. I love Stephen King. I read him since I was a kid, and his first book, Harry, came out. And what I love so much about him is he writes about people. It's not about the end of the world. It's not about werewolves. It's not about vampires. It's the people. And he really 
taught me, not only through reading him, but reading his book, which is called On Writing, that that's how to write, is to write about the people. Because who cares what happens to the people if you don't care about the people? And um, every now and then someone will read one of my books and they'll say, you know, I bet you're a Stephen King fan. And I don't write horror. I don't write horror at all. So I just love the way he tells the story and I love the way he makes the people so real and so important. So Stephen King. Good. Who's next? <laughs> Somebody else wants to answer that question? Um, okay. Well, I have to say the author that has had the most influence probably is J.R.R. Tolkien just because that's really the book that, that got me reading a lot. I mean, I was always a reader, but that's the book that really got me. The Hobbit was the book that really got me interested in finding more books like that and eventually writing books like Oh, that. yeah. Yeah. But there's lots of others. Like, I mean, that's a question you could answer for days and not be finished. I find. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Joe, what about you? You know, that, I'm with Ben on this. That's such a hard question for me to answer only because um, I never read fiction until about four years ago, ever. Wow. Except for what they forced me to in college. Um, I have a degree in, in history, and so, um, you know, I, and there's not much that I have re read outside of this genre. I don't read too much mainstream. I don't read any... Um, so, but the person that probably keeps me going the most is um, S.A. McCauley. She is my writing buddy. We meet every couple of weeks. She's a, a brilliant author. Um, and she, we do our sprints together. Everything, she keeps me on track. And, you know, I try to keep her on track. And, and we can come up with the craziest ideas. In fact, Roped is her, her brainchild, the characters for it. So we, did, we feed off of each other. So she's definitely probably the most inspiring for me, you know, as far as author goes. So. Good. I think this is a fun question. What was the first book you read, movie you saw, or other occurrence that made you realize that there was something other than mainstream heck going on in the world? Well, I, I've kind of already answered that one since I didn't read anything. <laughs> Um, really outside of this genre too much. Right. Uh, but so what got you into the genre to begin with? Um, well, actually the first book that I read in, in it was a het book, but it, it had some, um, some gay characters. But when I, you know, I, I kept reading books that were kind of stereotypical, and I just wanted to, you know, it didn't really represent the people that are close to me. And I, so I tended to start writing more realism. They mm -hmm. don't always get there happily ever after. It's sometimes hard. And so I, and I don't write a lot of fantasy. It's pretty angsty. And so I just, I'm trying to keep it as real as possible. And, um, you know, and, and be respectful to those people that, that I love that are in my life, you know. That mean, mm -hmm. you know, I want to tell their stories. Absolutely. You know, almost all my BDSM are based on my proofreader and his stories, and so he keeps me in check, and, you know, so I'm always telling other people's stories, not mine. So. Fantastic. Jamie? I don't really have an answer to that question, actually. <laughs> um, I don't know. When I started writing stories... They came out that way. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's your answer. That's the best way. No I pun mean, intended, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I don't know. The first story that I wrote was a fantasy, and now nobody's ever going to get to read it because it's horrible. But, you know. But the main character, I tried to give him a princess. He had no interest in him, can I tell you? So I gave him a prince instead, and it worked out. So there you go. Yeah. Ben. Well, when I was in high school, uh, one of the first jobs I ever had was at a bookstore called Brentano. 
um, it was across from Brentano's, and Brentano's broke off. And uh, it was around Christmas time, and they had all these trilogies that were bound together in box sets. And I was shocked out of my mind to see one called the Charlie and Peter trilogy. And, I mean, we're talking, this was a long time ago, and you didn't see stuff like that. And so I kind of stole it. Well, I did pay for it, but I bought another one that was the same price, so no one would know what I was buying, and then I switched them out of the bag. So I did pay for it, but I didn't want anybody to know what I was buying. And I didn't even know why I was buying it. And I got home and went to my bedroom and locked the door and started reading the book. And by the time the two characters had made love the first time, I was crying like a baby because I realized Aww. what I've been trying to deny my whole life. And that was I was gay. That's how I realized I was gay, was reading that book. Because uh, I didn't even want to hold hands with a girl at a movie theater. And I read that and I went, oh, that's why. <laughs> and so I, just, and I read the three books and found out that one, uh, it's Gordon Merrick was the author. And he wrote quite a few gay books back in the 70s. And that was what did it for me. And I've been, that's where I've been heading ever since. Good. I had a question come in on email. This one is specifically for Joe, but anybody can answer it who wants to. The question says, I have a male friend who swears that a woman can't write MM Dom sub stories conventionally. What do you feel your what uh let me try this again. What do you feel your best work there's a word missing. What do you feel is your best work in terms of capturing the intensity and desire of Dom Sub for a male reader? Oh, wow. You know, like I say, um, I am so vanilla, it's not even funny. <laughs> and I, <laughs> wow. Yeah, and I'm not so arrogant to think that I can tell these stories. Um, but for those who say women can't write um, in this genre, um, my my beta reader, my proofreader, my best friend. Um, I have family are are gay men, and my BDSM stories are my proofreader sto stories. They're my characters, but the actual BDSM elements to it. He goes through them. He makes sure they're they're right, um, and um, you know. It, I guess you'd have to say that he he's wrong then because I mean he's lived these experiences and he's done these crazy wild things that fascinate the hell out of me and so yeah I, a woman can tell a story no problem you know <laughs> for sure anybody else want to address either the um, the dom sub aspect or the women writing in them aspect I can certainly tell you that women can definitely write MM, absolutely, positively. I, I, I wouldn't have thought so when I first discovered the genre for some reason. I guess I held a little prejudice myself. But some of my very, very, very favorite books are by women. And I'm not going to say any author's names because I'll leave somebody out and forget I hurt someone's feelings. But let me tell you, <laughs> women, women can definitely write MM only, absolutely. Hey, Jamie, anything to add? I just think some things are more universal than, you know, you can write about stuff if you have feelings, then why can't you write them? And I don't necessarily think that gender has to be, I mean, gender is an issue, but I don't think it has to be the thing that defines what you write or how you write. Hey, and some things are just universal. That's all. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Okay, one more question, and then I'm going to give anybody who wants to do a reading an opportunity to do that. The very first thing you ever published, how does it make you feel when you go back and read it now? Oh, I cringe. <laughs> You know, Lurkin's Desire was my first. And I um, love that book. Thank you, man. <laughs> and what's funny is I had no clue um, what I was doing, and I remember 
the editors and even Elizabeth contact me and they're like, Joe, you can't leave this book hanging like this. And I'm like, oh, yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I really had to fight for this book. And so I actually had a plan in my head and I had to, to finish Quinn's Need um, before they would actually publish Lurkin and go, oh, okay, now we got it. It's, you know, but yeah, they weren't going to let me at first. Wow. So, Stick with to your guns, people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you believe in your work, just stick to your guns and explain yourself. And and um, it's funny now though that people still get mad at me for what I did in Lurkin's book, but it all worked out. If if it makes you feel any better, Joe, people are still yelling at me for the end of one of my books too. Mm. Oh, I know. Don't you love it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I do. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, we are. I fixed it, Jamie. You did. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Jamie's one of the people who still yells at me. <laughs> I mean, her ten pages from the end going, how is she going to fix this? She can't fix this in ten pages. That's not right. And yeah, she did not fix it in ten pages. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, but it took long enough. <laughs> well, you know, just the other day in the break room at work, I was reading my very first um, cell, which was... Um, Soul of the Mummy, and um, my husband, who works in the same place that I do, was sitting across, and he said, "You're reading your own book." <laughs> I went, well, of course. <laughs> I said, "I just wanted to see how it is," and I was really pleasantly surprised. I'm quite happy with that book um, because of the title. For some reason, it, it people shy away from it. I don't know what they think it is. But it's a very romantic book about two men who meet across thousands of years. And technically, he's a mummy, but he's not a mummy by the time they meet. And um, I really love that story. Uh, so I'm really proud of it. I, I'm thrilled of how far I've come and how much I've learned since then. But I'm really proud of that story. Jamie? Well, the first thing I had published was actually a short story. And I'm a fan. I read my own stories because I originally wrote them because I wanted to read them because I couldn't find a story out there that satisfied that need that I had at that time. That's why I wrote the story. And when I reread that short story that was the first thing I have published, I look at it and go, geez, I can't even write short like that anymore. <laughs> it was, it's actually a well-crafted short story, and I have trouble with short stories now more than I ever used to. But I read it, and I still like it. What I was that story? It's called The Runaway. It's actually published with a very small publisher called Freya's Bauer. And it's about um, two men who grew up together. I'm sorry, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they grew up together on a farm. And... One of them ended up leaving the farm under very trying circumstances and only comes back when his father dies. And he comes back after the funeral. And the story actually takes place over that day that, that they're reunited after 10 years and, and kind of revisiting why he left and, and what they're going to do now. So it's really a very short snapshot of their lives about getting back together, basically, from when they were kids. So, it's a good story. I like it. <laughs> sounds, it sounds like a good story. Did anyone have any have a, a reading that they wanted to share with us? No. No way. <laughs> no? Okay, that's fine. No, I just wanted to give you the choice. You know, I tried to pick out a scene, but the new book is so, every chat, every, it's so... I couldn't figure out a scene to take out to read, so I'm sorry I don't have to. No, that's all right. All right, so then this is a good question to wrap up since we're down to our last five minutes. What's one thing you want your readers to know about you that they might not already know? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> wow. There, there's something that I want readers to know about them. How about that? Okay. I want people to know that they can get whatever their dream is, that they need to believe in themselves. Because I wanted to be a writer all my life. 
I told all my friends and family and everything I wanted to be a writer. And year after year, and then decades started going by, and I never even submitted anything. And I would write something, and professional writers would read it and go, oh, you need to submit this. And I wouldn't submit it because I was so afraid of getting that rejection slip, so afraid of being told by professionals that, no, you can't write. So I never took a chance. And then just three and a half years ago, I finally, I was listening to an inspirational speaker talking about pursuing your dreams, and I finally thought, oh, what the heck. And I wrote that story, and I sent it in, and sold it in four days. Oh, yeah. Four days. Wow, awesome. <laughs> and I went, oh, my gosh, if that wasn't God whispering in my ear telling me to pursue my dream. And while I was writing it, I kept hearing this song in which there was a line that says, leap and the net will appear. And that has just become my line now. I want everyone who is watching you ever, whatever your dream is, whether it's to be a dancer or a gardener or to raise a family or whatever, to know that your dream can and will come true. And that's what I want to say. Jamie? I think that's a really good note to end on, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know... It is Dreams Been Oppressed where dreams come true, so maybe it is again. Joe, do you have anything to add? No, I'm pretty open. Everyone knows I'm crazy as hell, so you know they <laughs> I don't I don't hide too much from my readers. They know me. <laughs> Fantastic. Well thank everyone for joining us who came to the live viewing. We're getting ready to wrap up. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can find um, Joe and Jamie and Ben on Facebook. Like, look them up, or you can find us through Dream Spinner Press at dreamspinnerpress.com. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks.